Our second example of a transformation is projection. It also comes from the space of geometric vectors. And this discussion will parallel our first discussion. I'll introduce the transformation. We'll determine whether or not it's linear. And if it is linear, we'll talk about its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And then try to construct a miracle algebraic equation whose roots are the same as the eigenvalues of the transformation. All right, here is the definition of the projection onto a straight line. We we'll once again have a straight line that passes through the origin, and projection works like this. For any given vector, assuming this is the vector u, the projection once again calls for drawing a line that's perpendicular to the straight line given, but this time you don't go beyond the line, you just land on the line, and wherever you land, that's the image. So if this is u, if we start with u, then this vector is p u. And p, of course, stands for projection. So similar to reflection, except you don't go beyond the line, you just stay on the line. So all of the images of all the vectors will land on the straight line. Let's consider one more example. How about this vector w? Well, we'll do v. v. And to project it, draw a straight line through the tip of the vector until you meet the line, and that's P of V. Okay, is this transformation linear? Well, let's do the sum test first. Let's consider two vectors. I think I would prefer to draw them on the same side. So we once again have W. Although it doesn't matter, it'll just make for a less messy drawing. And their sum would be right Here, this is u plus w. To avoid making this messy, I will not actually draw the sum, but it's right here. And here is the projection of the sum. So this would be p of u plus w. And now I need parentheses. And here is a very interesting question, which in this case is not 100% obvious but it won't be too hard to see. All right, so we have two options, adding the two vectors first and then projecting them, which is exactly what we did right here, or projecting the individual vectors first and then adding up the results. Well, we already have the projection of u. Let me draw p of u plus w, just so that we see it as a vector. Okay, so we have already projected u and we have p of u right here. All right, let's now project W, and here is P of W. And now if we add up these images, do we end up at P of U plus W? If we, if we do, that's evidence that this transformation is linear, and if it doesn't, that's evidence that this transformation is nonlinear. And it does. That's because I think it's relatively easy to see that this vector right here equals this vector right here. That's because this, if we had parallel uh, translated the vector w to use the tip to tail approach to adding vectors, it would have ended up being this line. And of course, this is the projection of that line onto this straight line. And I think it's relatively easy to see that it's the same vector, this little guy here and this one, which tells us that p of u plus p of w actually equals p of u plus w. So it passes the sum test. You can test multiplication by scalar on your own. It will pass that test as well. So projection is indeed a linear transformation. And once the transformation is linear, it immediately brings up the question of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. What are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this transformation? So we'll do it by insight. So you should pause the video and see if you can come up with those. There are, two, there are two eigenvectors and two corresponding eigenvalues, but I'll reveal them now. So one of the eigenvectors is once again, I'll call it V1, any vector that lies along this projection line. That's because P of V1 equals V1. Let's see that. The recipe is draw, us, draw a line 
through the tip of the vector orthogonal to the projection line and wherever it meets the projection line that's the image of the vector. So V1 is its own image which tells us that the corresponding eigenvalue is 1. Can you find the other vector? Well the other vector is once again the one orthogonal to the projection line. I'll call this vector V2. Let's see what V2 is under projection. Well, once again, draw a straight line through the tip of this vector, orthogonal to the projection line. This line coincides with this vector and stop at the projection line. And wherever you land, that's the image. So P of V2 is zero. P of V2 is the zero vector. Very nice example. This is our first zero eigenvalue equals the zero vector. Or you can write this as zero times, times v2. Zero the scalar times the vector v2. Now this equation fits the eigenvalue eigenvector pattern with zero the corresponding eigenvalue. So there are two eigenvalues, zero and one, and two corresponding eigenvectors. The eigenvectors are the same as in the case of reflection. One that lies along this line, again, it's an entire eigenspace, so choose one. And the other one that's perpendicular to the line. Once again, that's an entire eigenspace, so just pick one. And this is a very interesting example. Zero is a perfectly legitimate eigenvalue. An eigenvector cannot be the zero vector. The point of eigenvalues and eigenvectors is to learn something about the transformation, to have greater insight into the transformation, and to know something about the transformation. And it's true for any linear transformation. You can prove this if you would like, that the image of the zero vector is always the zero vector. This is one of the required properties, or it's a consequence of the definition of a linear transformation. So this is always true. So we're never interested for a particular linear transformation what the image of zero is because we know what the image of the zero vector is. It's the zero vector. It's not telling us anything. It's not anything interesting specific to the transformation. So the zero vector is never considered an eigenvector. But zero can very well be the eigenvalue corresponding to a non-zero vector, any vector along this line. And, that's, and that tells us something interesting about the transformation. That's a legitimate eigenvalue and a very interesting eigenvector. And projection is the first linear transformation where we saw that property. Now let's ask the following question. We're now going to discuss that algebraic equation that has 0 and 1 as its roots, somewhat surprisingly. So let's try to characterize projection and see what would happen if we applied projection twice, successively, if we projected a vector and then projected the result. Well, if we take any vector and project it, we would end up on the line, and then projecting the vector on that line does nothing at all. So projecting a vector twice is the same as projecting a vector once, which can be captured by, I will use this space right here, this says, that projecting any vector twice is equivalent to projecting it once. This, by the way, when we go away from geometric vectors, any transformation that has this property will be called projection. And this is just another example of geometric vectors lending terminology to all other vector spaces. This, for us, is completely natural when it comes to this particular transformation. But then this algebraic equation is used as inspiration and is metaphorically carried over to much more general linear spaces. And any transformation that satisfies this property is called a projection. Now, thinking algebraically, the corresponding equation, I'm not saying in what way it's corresponding. I'm just saying it's similar. I'm not saying anything particularly precise here. I'm just saying that certainly this is similar to this. If we were to look for an analogous algebraic equation, it would be x squared equals x, something that squares equals itself. And what are the roots of this equation? Ha! 0 and 1. 
So once again, we see that magically, having figured out some algebraic relationship about the transformation and having converted it to an algebraic equation, all of a sudden gives us an equation whose roots are the eigenvalues. Coincidence? I think not. So I'm really looking forward to explaining why this is not a coincidence, but more of a general rule. So now we're done with projection and we're going to move on to rotations.